This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local story. San Diego police are asking for your help to track down the thieves who stole the wheels off more than two dozen trucks, vans and SUVs across the county. All of the thefts happened in the overnight hours and many involved a Toyota 4Runner and Tacomas with Toyota racing development wheels. There you see it, a business owner in Kearney Mesa recorded this video of a tire theft on his doorbell camera. The thieves use a special device to lift the vehicle, then loosen the lug nuts, pop the wheels off and leave in just a matter of minutes. We spoke with a woman who had to replace the tires on her car after it was hit outside her Rancho Penasquitos apartment. I'm trying to get the original ones that I had on there, but I'm scared that they'll do it again. But I'm also scared that they might do it with my new wheels. Uh, so I had to get locked, but any thief could get into anything, and it's sad. Yeah, frustrating. San Diego police say they're working with other law enforcement agencies across the county to try and stop these crimes, and they're urging anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers. Tipsters can remain anonymous and could be eligible for a reward of up to $1,000. It's been more than eight months since a Camp Pendleton Marine drove drunk and caused a crash that killed a 12 year old boy in Oceanside. This morning, Edward Minot Jr. admitted to his actions in court and learned the punishment he now faces. Minot changed his pleas to guilty on one count of gross vehicular manslaughter and one count of DUI. A second DUI and the murder charge were dropped. You're also admitting as to count two, that's the vehicular manslaughter count. Minot Jr.'s public defender shielded him from our camera as he entered his guilty pleas and admitted to driving drunk and causing the crash that killed 12-year-old Santiago Gaspar. It happened last 4th of July as Santiago was headed home from watching the fireworks with his brother and a family friend. Police say they tried to pull Minot Jr. over for driving with no headlights and he sped off, slamming into them soon after. Santiago died at the scene. His six-year-old brother and two others, including a passenger in Minot Jr.'s car, were taken to the hospital with various injuries. Minot Jr. will be sentenced next month. He had been facing the possibility of life in prison. Instead, he will get the maximum under the plea deal of 13 years and eight months. Fire investigators are looking into what started a two alarm fire at a vacant downtown building. This happened just before 630 last night at 6th Avenue and A Street. The deputy chief says the fire started on the third floor and the area was filled with heavy debris and garbage. Now, neighbors say gates that blocked access to the building had been unlocked for months. A Marriott Hotel valet attendant says her company used the rent space below the building to park cars. We no longer park cars here, but now it's not locked anymore, you know, so we kind of figured there's probably people hanging out in there. There should not have been anybody in there, so um, it is probable that there were squatters or somebody who illegally entered the building. The deputy chief also told us code compliance investigated a complaint involving that very building. We found it in city records. That complaint was reported three years ago, and it did in fact involve squatters. The city of San Diego is looking for a new fire chief. Last week, Chief Colin Stoll announced his retirement at the end of the summer after 34 years with the department. The search for his replacement includes a public survey and community feedback forums. City leaders say candidates will then undergo a series of interviews and the new chief will be chosen in June. The city is also in the process of hiring a new police chief as Chief David Nislight is also retiring. Our chief meteorologist Sheeta Parveen joins us now with a look at our Tuesday forecast. Hi Sheena. Hey Monica, as we head through the afternoon, it's going to be drier than yesterday, so we shouldn't be seeing all those storms that we had around yesterday afternoon, but we will be seeing pretty mild temperatures, mid to low 70s inland, close to 70 at the coast. Mountains, however, will still have a slight chance for an afternoon shower or storm in the 50s, deserts close to 80. For the inland valleys, for the rest of this week, it looks really good, mid to low 70s all the way through Friday. But then we head into the weekend. We have a slight shower chance on Saturday. It will be cooler and a higher chance on Sunday. Oh no, rain for the weekend. We'll stay tuned for more of that. Thank you, Sheena. Coming up, neighbors in Carlsbad say a slow and continuing landslide has left their homes teetering on the edge of a hill. Take a look. But now the city is taking responsibility. And did you see this? What was this strange light? I saw it streaking across the skies of San Diego last night. We'll explain what it was all about coming up. Stay with us.
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, getting results. San Diego families promised an affordable home. We said, you know, finally, we're going to have a place where we can live in. Giving thousands to a man who said their money would also help homeless veterans. I feel sorry for the people he lied to. Now, after our investigation, there's a warrant out for his arrest, helping San Diego families finally get justice. I really, really appreciate your work. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, fighting for you. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. Today, the San Diego City Council will consider extending a state of emergency for January's historic flooding. The declaration has made it easier for victims to access disaster relief. Many families are still working to rebuild after those floods. Some are still staying in hotels. Last week, county supervisors also voted to extend assistance, including more than $6 million for lodging and $3 million for daily meals. Homeowners in Carlsbad can now feel some relief after a slow moving landslide that was threatening homes there. The city of Carlsbad has agreed to fix the slope, which left their homes teetering on the edge of a hill. The city council authorized a multi-million dollar settlement for repairs. They called a special emergency meeting last month to address the issue just weeks before a trial began. An attorney for the homeowners was in trial when the settlement talks started. We were just about to present our last witness and the city wanted to have some settlement discussions and luckily we were able to reach some resolution. It was very scary and um, just frustrating to watch everything we've built just slowly, you know, go down the hill without being able to stop it. I am definitely um, would like to stay. This has been a home, you know, that we've been in for 24 years and a lot of family memories. I have no desire to leave. A representative for the city of Carlsbad says the repair plan includes two rows of large pins to stabilize the hillside and the installation of geo mesh to prevent further sliding. As part of Women's History Month, three San Diego skateboarders were recognized as women of impact by County Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer. Bryce Wettenstein and Jordan Barrett are both from Encinitas. They were on the first ever USA Olympic skateboarding team. And Amelia Brakota is the world's first Polish Olympic skateboarder who has organized skateboarding programs in San Diego for more than a decade now. Girls and women didn't skate when I was growing up and it was hard to be a part of the boys club and honestly no matter what tricks I learned they would always mock me and basically make me feel unwelcome. So that's what we want to do through exposure is to pro provide opportunities for the next generation. I definitely think falling down and getting back up is a very big lesson because that's kind of what you're doing constantly with skateboarding and trying to push yourself with skateboarding, you fall even more and just keep getting back up. Keep getting back up. Both Wetstein and Barrett are hoping to qualify for their second Olympics this summer in Paris. The games begin July 26th right here on NBC7. Let the madness begin. The NCAA tournament officially tips off with two games today. However, Thursday and Friday is when we'll see the majority of teams in the first round, including San Diego State. The number five seed Aztecs will face 12 seed UAB on Friday in Spokane. NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, mostly sunny, also drier near 70 at the coast. Mid-70s inland, mountains will be in about the upper 50s with a slight shower or storm chance. Deserts close to 80 degrees. As we head through the rest of this week, though, the weather really does look good for the coast and inland valleys. Dry through Friday, then we head into the weekend and we have some big changes. Rain chances increase over the weekend. The highest chance is going to be Sunday. Also a breezy onshore wind, chilly temperatures, and in the mountains Sunday, we could see a little bit of snow. How about that? All right, thanks, Gina. If you looked up at the sky last night and saw this, did you see it? Well, don't worry. It turns out it was a SpaceX rocket launched from 7:30 at Vandenberg Air Force Base in Santa Barbara County. The Falcon 9 rocket was launching 22 Starlink satellites. More coverage to count on at NBC7.com. Goodbye.